We can go. So the reason I'm here, you want to do an introduction? Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so obviously you're my mentor and I look up to you, uh, but for the purposes of today, I'm going to be the enemy. <laughs> WMC. Uh, so who are you and Udumengani? Well, my name is Kolofelo Sekepe Maponya. Mm. Uh, one of those people with uh, two names and the same name because <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and that's basically me mm. and that's entrepreneur also so yeah let's just say that uh, i'm one of those people who do business and define the the name of the word business Jeez. Uh, to say the business of business is business are you rich no <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i think i think anyone that googles you will see some of the work that you've done uh, i know i did at some point uh, i saw Matu Memaponya Investments, which is property. I've seen some of your investments in AFCRI, uh, SA Home Loans, for example. So I think when people Google you, I think they'll also get a bigger picture of some of the things that you've done. And one of the things I think a lot of people may not know is, is the success of your father. Yeah. yeah. Who was your father? Since you say Maponya, obviously we think of Dr. Richard Maponya. Was that your father? No, that was my uncle, and uh, well, he, he in our culture is my father also. Yes. Uh, so my father is Matumi Maponya. He had two names. One was a given name, uh, Elliot. Elliot was the name he was given because my grandfather yeah. uh, did not have a, an employer, so he worked as a native painter that was his business yeah. in alexander and there was a mr elliot that he did work for <laughs> and mr elliot stamped his uh dompas sure to say that he worked for him Jeez. so i think he thanked you by naming my father elliot, elliot. who later removed the name <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> yeah um today we're here to talk about two new foods uh and i've told you about a lot of issues with with your idea and your concept. Um, and I think I'm here to grill you today um, with the hope that you can educate me because I think this Paza business specifically in townships has become a very hot topic. Somalians, Pakistanis, Ethiopians are, are almost running rampant in my yes, yes, So Yesterday I read one a very big presentation of some very good uh, black businessmen that I actually know one or two of yes. buying a dead retail business that's loss making Jeez. and some were plugging something that looks like the to you foods model and uh, okay. I confronted some bankers to say what the hell is happening here Jeez. and I realized it looks like you know ever since we started making noise about to you foods yes. everyone is coming with something that takes us back to the same people uh, that want to keep on doing the same things to bring about change. Jeez. So, uh, so what's the history of two, of two you? When did you come up with the idea and, and what exactly is it? Two you foods is a concept that was born out of all the shops that our parents had and they were doing nothing. And at some point in the beginning, we consulted some politicians and they ended up going to the national retailers like your pick and pace. Mm. And they then went and put up these shops in the townships uh, where they renovated the old shops. And while they were doing that and the offering was being given, mm. I then realized that actually our parents' shops or the old shops were designed along Bantu rules and uh, Bantu uh, town planning. Mm. So they were either at the beginning of the township as it was designed by the Boers, yes. 
or in the middle of the township. It did not take care of convenience for the people where they were uh, uh, in one place. Yes. So there was small shops or one big shop. Yes. Kind of like the malls that you have today. Still apartheid special planning. Yes. You go and put this big box at the entrance somewhere. That's concentrated. And that's concentrated and everyone must now get into a taxi like ants yes. and go to that place. So when they were doing this, I then said, I'm not proceeding with this. I'm not buying into this. I want real convenience. Mm-hmm. I want how the Spaza shop started. Sure. You know, uh, not the Spaza shop we talk about today where politicians, when they want to say that something is mediocre, they say we're not a Spaza shop. <laughs> <laughs> the Spaza shop of convenience. The name Spaza sure. is a mimic. It, it's it's an ampur this. It's, yes. a, it's a semi this. Okay. The Spaza came about because people could not take a taxi to the shopping center. Sure. So they needed toothpaste, they needed eggs, they needed this and that. Mm-hmm. So people, you know, uh, in Sepedi, we have a saying, uh, mm-hmm. So if you don't give people the resources yes. and the tools, you will still find them yes. having satisfied of the first. So, people opened the spazas in their garages. Mm. Back then, there was Nafkok, where my father was there, and he was working closely with Dr. Mutsuenyang. He headed the agriculture and the industrial desk. Mm. And then there was an issue of licensing. And back then, remember, health inspectors were a big thing. Uh, there was uh, proper, uh, I would say, governance. Mm. So the spazas were not licensed. And you know, when you carry food and when you carry uh, health uh, skin products and all those yes. things, you need to have a license that says that you are a responsible trader, you have a responsible environment, you have a healthy environment. What we would now uh, classify under uh, things like HACCP standards. Yes. So because they didn't have that, they were then given a smaller license. So they then joined NAFCOP mm. to campaign for licensing and they got a smaller license, which was the Small Traders Plaza license. Okay, this was so the guys operating so, Yeah, so you had a general dealer, Yes. you had a cafe, you had a supermarket, Yes. and then you had a Small, small Trader, trader Spaza. Spaza. Okay. So those were the type of licensing environments. Uh, that they operated under. Okay. So they gave convenience. They gave everything that people needed before they would go to that. Mm. The problem is that the convenience of 1980 and the convenience of today yes. is not the same. That's where to you food comes in. Huh. So the old shop renovating it all and well, sure. it's, it still won't cater. Uh, what the shopping mall caters for. Sure. But if you had a convenience shop, like we have in every suburb, mm. you have a, you know, a mini spa, you have a mini uh, pick and pay, you have a mini this. Sure. If you had that in all these environments, mm. then you have the real convenience, the real purpose why the spaza was there. Yes. But now to you foods comes with all the standards that you can get in the main supermarket. Okay. So yeah, now you're getting full convenience. You're getting a confectioner. Confectionery is bakery. Yes. Okay. Which means that you can bake, uh, you know, your bread. You can bake your cakes. Mm. When there are funerals in the neighborhood, yes. You have a commercial kitchen. You have a big uh, gas uh, oven that can do a hundred loaves or a thousand cookies an hour. Yes. You are no longer that para human being that has to get into a bike or a taxi and go to another neighborhood, to other people, to do what you can do in your neighborhood. That's what True Foods brings in terms of the structure, the equipment, at a price whereby for you to have this convenience shop in a suburb or mm. with a conventional, it will cost you about 10 million rent to build it. Sure. It cost us about one and a half million rent to put it up and everything. 
So, so we don't charge the entrepreneur the one and a half. So, so, so the first question I want to ask is, you guys are not as puzzle shop. And number two, I've, I've seen, to what you're saying, the, the pick and pays and the spas that are smaller are about 10 million when they used to franchise. Yeah. So you guys are not as puzzle shop. And how does it become that you guys are a fraction of that 10 million? How did you get that right? Uh, we are property developers also. Okay. Uh, Matumi Mapunye Investment is a property development yes. company. Yes. So when you have a mall development, mm. you have the property developer, which I used to do a lot, and my uncle and his family still does. Mm. Uh, I do it now on a different property class, yes. which is this one that I'm promoting now. So we put up the property. Okay. Which means that the same as when you get a franchise. You mm. pay the 10 million, but you still go and pay... Uh, a lease. Of course. So we say with us, you don't have to pay 10 million. You have to bring 300,000 rent, mm. buy your stock, and you are working uh, uh, tools. Mm. You don't give us money. We don't, okay. make, we don't profit out of that. We give you the property on a normal lease, mm. but because we know you don't have credit checks, you don't have all those things mm. that uh, might be required. But we know the business is there. Sure. We say we will take a percentage of your turnover as renter. The, 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 the franchise the franchisor yes. takes twice what we take as rental as franchise fees. So we only take uh, half of what these other guys are charging. Yes. And then we then give you on a percentage basis other services like advertising, mm. uh all those bulk or syndicated services that you get. Yes. So, the 300,000 is probably your working capital. Yes. The property is what you would rent from a mall. That's what we give to you. Mm. Why don't you have the 10 million rent cost? Is because we compacted. We used design and innovation yes. to compact the store. Instead of you needing 6 million rent uh, 21 day stock yes. as the franchise requirement is yes. to build up that 10 million with us you need only uh, 5 days of stock of stock we are practically an Alibaba because our concentration yes. is that we keep 5 to 800 SKUs in the store what's SKU? Uh, it's a uh, it's it's stock units. Okay. So it's it's your stock key units, which is your each and every individual item in the stock. Okay. Okay. So if you are having Mahe 500 milliliter, one liter, sure. The 500 is an SKU on its own. The one liter is an SKU on okay. its own. So we keep five to eight hundred SKUs in the stock. Okay. But our product that we sell and we keep in the warehouse is 15,000 SKUs. Okay. Which means that we are a JIT store. We are just in time store. Mm. Just like you go to the Toyota or Mercedes Benz dealership those days, you don't go there and find a big warehouse. Yes. The warehouse is sitting somewhere. Sure. So we've got two very big warehouses where everything is sitting there. Sure. So a person says to the store owner, this is what I eat a month. Those are my groceries. Mm. The store owner places the order. Every month, your phone will deliver. Sure. On that day that he needs the groceries, the groceries are delivered in the packaging he wants, in the sizes he wants, not necessarily the sizes that are kept in the store. Mm. So that level of not holding too much stock frees capital. Sure. So you're no longer... Uh, exposed to stock of 7 million in the 10 million sure. and refrigeration and other things of uh, another 3 million. Sure. The refrigeration is part of the rental. Sure. It sounds it sounds very complicated and, and detailed. I just want to go back. You mentioned that you guys bring the property. So you build what? You build a, a, a business? You build brick and mortar? We build 
uh, a panel stop. Okay. It's a building. With bricks? It's not bricks and mortar. Okay. It is done with, uh, you know how student accommodation is built with uh, container panels. Okay. So we build the buildings, even the, uh, the, 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 the shops, most of the shops at the filling stations, the yes. convenience shops, they are built with those building panels. panels. It's quicker to build with them. They are manufactured quicker. Yes. Brick and mortar is not so environmentally friendly. Yes. And it's not so fast. And it's not so cost effective. As There's, a, there's a, a, a mall in Malvo called 27 Boxes. We use, the same, something we, use, to that? we use the same type of technology. Okay. But we make it even better. Sure. We don't use the concrete and the steel that they put there. At all? No. Is this what cuts down a big... Part of the setup cost. Yes. Okay. And time. Then the second thing you mentioned three hundred thousand, yeah. which to a, a normal person sounds like a lot. We don't know comparatively how much a normal spaza shop needs to start off, but you've mentioned that uh, these bigger players need ten million. So, so are that, you are you competing with a spaza shop or are you in the middle of of the two? Um, we promoting the spaza shop. Practically, okay. Um, like I said, we're a sponsor shop of 1985 in 2021. We're a convenience store. Wait, please stop there. Yo, I just got goosebumps. So, apartheid stopped black people from evolving. Yes. And it sounds like you're saying there was puzzle shops in 1981, and because of apartheid and oppression. We were stifled in evolving. And you're saying conceptually you're taking that spaza shop and evolving. applying evolution hypothetically and giving us what spaza shops should be today, which is not what so, we're seeing. So today, 1981, a spaza shop yes. would cost you about 50000 to put shelving and stock. Sure. It still costs the same because it has not evolved. Evolved at all. So evolving okay. it. And putting time value for money sure. brings it to 300,000, practically. Um, yo, um, the other thing I wanted to ask, um, 300,000, something you mentioned. You kept mentioning franchise and the fees. So this is a franchise. You're not selling, let's say... It's a, a hybrid of a franchise and a buying group. Okay. So the stores are independent. They are entrepreneurs. Um, so you're not looking for managers. You're looking for business We're looking for owners. entrepreneurs. Okay. So if I were to look at the current uh, franchise environment or national franchises and what, whatever, yes, I would say the closest to what we are doing would be spa. Or and because and, the spa the spa and, model gives the owner freedom or yeah, some some level of freedom. A, a level of freedom, mm. um, and the store depends on the on, 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 on the owner and the buying is syndicated but the owner can still go and buy where they buy and they still have their own management style and everything okay. so that, that is what we are providing uh, unlike the franchise model where we practically give you everything to do and bring you costs i've run franchises they bring you costs mm. to upgrade every day yes. and then they take 10% uh, on your turnover as a royalty and at the end of the day you don't understand what you were working for. Jeez. The pricing is predetermined. The, the truth yeah. of the matter is that franchise, franchises in today's terms are, you, you're a glorified manager yes. as a franchisee. You don't have any freedom. Yeah. And you're saying you're, giving, you're going to give people freedom I'm, I'm one of those people who cannot swim in a tank. Yes. So I would like to believe that everyone is like me. They're just not able to express it. Yes. So I let people understand that I'm not putting them in a tank and I don't okay. want them in a tank. 300,000 is, is similar to, I think a quantum taxi today is 450,000. Yes. And those quantums might make you 20,000 take home. So if you're, saying, if you're saying you want to store for 300000 which is cheaper than a quantum, quantum, are you also telling people they're going to maybe make 20000 take home? 70000 on average. Take home? Yes. From so 300000 it's, it's worth it for a lot of people to sell their quantums. 
Jesus. And move into this business. Which means in, in 10 months, you've basically doubled what you put in. Yes. It gets even better. That is why we say we are here to develop entrepreneurs. Yes. We are here to develop people into wealth. Jesus. Uh, this is the same concept that the Pakistanis do. Sure. The, the Pakistanis call one of their own, they put him in a store. In, 20, in, in 12 months, he's developed, he's developing another one. Yes. This is the same thing that we are doing. So in 6 to 12 months, we want the same person who bought the To You Food store mm. to now open To You Foods liquor. We want that one person. One liquor as well. Yes. We so want bakery, that, liquor. And bakery, no more. butchery. In the current one, yes. we have a bakery, we have a butchery, we have a kitchen a deli, Jeez. and we have a grocery store. Comparatively, how much bigger are you than a normal spaza shop? And uh, the second question is going to be, are you competing with spazas or competing with someone else? We're competing with uh, your national retailers. Not with spaza shops? We're, we're about 10 to 20 times bigger than a normal spaza shop. Okay. We're about three, four times the size of a Pakistani shop. Are you open to having what we call foreigners become business owners in Tuyu? What, what is your objective with Tuyu? Especially considering that, uh, like I said, one of the hot, hotly contested topics is foreigners running retail in townships. You see, in South Africa, our definition of foreigners is very tricky. Yes. It means black foreigners. Of course. We've got lots of white foreigners. Of course. Almost, almost all whites, if not all whites, are foreigners. Yes. Yes. So when you say foreigners, uh, it becomes very tricky yes. because uh, the first thing is to empower those that are indigenous. Hmm. Is I am one of those that were born in a township and yes. grew up in a township. So we are here to empower locals. Okay. Uh, that are African uh, of descent. Yes. Some of those locals are naturalized because they've been living here long enough. Sure. I wouldn't call them a foreigner. Okay. Some of them are refugees mm. that you have seen videos where they come from people's yes. heads are cut off. Yes. Do you want to throw them back? Do you want them to not have a means of an income? Yes. So we are very careful about how we define foreigners, mm. but we are also very careful about how we really nearly, uh, as a country, mm. give benefits to illegal immigrants. Yes, which is so, very problematic. If you were telling, if you are going to ask me if we are going to give shops to illegal immigrants, I'd say no. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's very fair. And cu and currently, there's no policing system of spaza shops because at least. As violent as it is, the taxi industry has some type of policing system. Yes. We can almost comfortably say all taxi owners are black South Africans. Yes. But in the Spaza space, there's no policing system. And I think the example you made of licenses back in the day, they don't apply anymore. It's Anyone also, can open a Spaza It's also a very hard uh, business. You know, when mm. I grew up, I woke up at 4 a.m. Mm. to go and fetch bread. Mm, from and suppliers, I, and, I, and I slept at 10 a.m. after closing the shop between 8 and 9. 10 p.m. I mean 10 p.m. Sure. Yeah, after closing uh, the shop and doing stock take, yes, and balancing the cash. Yeah. every day, every day. A lot of our South African people are used to free money mm. and uh, tenders that are not sustainable. Yes. And the culture is such that people are partying more than they are working. Yes. So the working culture is very scarce. Uh, even when I grew up, there was not so many families who took up uh, such a sacrifice. Even in the white communities, it's uh, the same. It's the Greeks who didn't go much to school. Yes. And, uh, and the that have the ethic. That have the work ethic because they've got no alternative. Sure. My father used to say to me, I don't have a degree for you to inherit. 
I want, I want to touch on a few things that you're mentioning. Uh, the first one is working hours. Yeah. So 2U is going to operate similar to the national retailers or closer to, because I know Pakistanis operate from normally 6 to 10. Then yeah. I also want to touch on suppliers, because you so, mentioned suppliers. So, so we're, we're a little bit less harder than the Pakistanis. Okay. We use a concept called 609 by Afana. Sure. So we operate from 6 to 9. Okay. Yeah. So it, at least, because a lot of businesses close at 5, which is yeah. where a lot of these uh, Pakistanis, Somalians, Ethiopians win, because yeah. as soon as those stores I'll, are closed... I'll give you another lesson the late Martin Mabuna used to give me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he, he traveled a lot, you know, in his day. Yeah. And everywhere in the world, when I also got the opportunity to travel, economies run 24 hours. Sure. They should. They our, should run 24 hours. Wish, our wish is for our economies to run 24 hours mm. because we pay rent for 24 hours. Yes. The bank charges interest 24 hours. Yes. Everything is charged 24 hours. There's a there's a lag. That is why the graph doesn't balance. Sure. Because we produce twelve hours, but we pay twenty four hours. hours. Who pays for the balance of the twelve sure. hours? So right now with six uh, to nine, sure. we are trying to do eighteen hours. That's pretty. We are short of only six. We hope we will cover the six hours at some uh, uh, at some point. Do you think at some point you might consider 24 hours? I know franchises like McDonald's have looked into that. Where we, workers work shifts and shops are open the whole day. We, we are looking at that. Uh, that is the only way that, may, that, that, that optimizes an economy. If you go yes. to Singapore, how they got it right. Yes. Go to Malaysia, you go to China, you go to uh, New York. Yes. All of them, they run 24-hour economies. Sure. When other people, uh, for example... We have nurses, police, and doctors, yes. and whoever. They work 24 hours. in a 24-hour environment. Yes. So when they get off at 10 at night, mm. like you, when you knock off at 5 o'clock in yes. the evening, you go for a sundown until 10 in the evening. Yes. So a guy who knocks off at 10 at night, where does he go for his sundown? Sure. One of the, one of the uh, arguments Dr. Umar Johnson makes is in a race where we're far behind as a people, the best way to catch up, or one of the ways, because there's different ways, is to run faster. And if you're competing, let's say, with a, a white business that closes at five, to try and catch up, you should probably open twice the, the trading hours to try and... You open twice the trading hours, mm. you think four times more innovatively, uh, sure. because you don't have the advantage. Yes. Uh, to catch up to that advantage, you are already four steps behind. 100%. Um, you then also have to fight the battle of the hatred your fellow brother has for you, the lack of confidence your fellow brother has in you. Yes. Uh, you have so many steep, uh, steps to handle. Sometimes when my white friends say to me, let's go bungee jumping or something, I say, you know, every day I wake up. It's like a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> We didn't touch on suppliers, and you're now talking about hatred equal from Black Brothers. Are you guys going to be using the same suppliers as everyone does, your Tiger brand, etc.? And then secondly, not just there's, there's Black on Black hate. We know that. I've got a feeling that some of these Pakistani Somalians might send your people to come destroy what you're doing. Some of the white people might do the same. Do you guys have a, a, a system around security for, for to you, uh, for the franchisees? But before we get to that, uh, are you guys using the same suppliers as everyone else? We're using the same suppliers. We've got even a bigger brand of, uh, a bigger band of suppliers, even imports. Okay. Everyone else is importing. Sure. But we are also, uh, we've been for the last six months identifying black imaging suppliers. Sure. I can mention one which I met through you, which is a school. Yes. Uh, so yes. we hope to put him on the same level as uh, most of the, you know, the known uh, brands. Known brands. Uh, give him that coverage in our stores. Huh. Uh, you know, give him the mentorship and all those things. Um, there's a juice company. You can find most of them on our website, uh, mobile website that is yes. running now. 
but we are concentrating on developing black suppliers, but we rely on the current existing suppliers. We don't wish them away. Sure. People love their products. Sure. If they want to work with us, we work with them. Sure. If at some point they get into collusion with other retailers, we will deal with them accordingly. Sure. We will develop alternatives. And because we are in the core sure. uh, of the market, uh, we are also prone to use our social influence. We are not nobodies. Yes. Uh, we have social influence in those communities. Sure. So we don't think we will reach that stage. You you mention um, when you mention suppliers and oh, okay. So the first thing is you spoke about giving people freedom, like spa. So I own a franchise. Will I have freedom to source some of my stuff from local guys that you may not know? How do I bring that into into so the we business? Have a, we have a system on our ERP system. You put the product for us for listing, you mm -hmm. send the product. A sample. You, you send us the samples of sure. the products. Our buyers, they come, they inspect the place. Mm -hmm. Our uh, health people, they come. Currently, we are using consultants from DUT, uh, which is uh, Devon University of Technology. Yeah. Uh, they have actually cost us more. That's why our store costs go up uh, in putting up the HACCP standards. Yeah. So, I don't know of any store sure. that conforms to fully to HACCP standards in the township sure. uh, and in some of our suburbs. Sure. We do. Okay. So our design is fully HACCP. Our warehouse is fully HACCP. Sure. Uh, you can, for lack of any better word, you can call us the woolies of the rural Aitch. and township markets. So that's supply pricing. Can you guys compete on price with everyone who's out there, from Spaza Shop to the big national guys? If we can't, I think we will all go see the competition commission. <laughs> <laughs> but the aim is to be competitively... No, no, we, we can and we should. Sure. Because we have a competition law in South Africa sure. that says that my supplier uh, can give discounts on volume to uh, bigger clients. Sure. But they cannot make those clients uncompetitive to us. Okay. That's pa number pa one. Pakistan is... Number sorry, two, sorry, sorry. Number two is that we are not opening 10 stores. We are starting, with 75. We are starting with 75 stores. Okay. But we are opening 1,000 stores this year. In 2021? In 2021. Jeez. So economies of scale will always play a bigger role. So our volume is such that we are not mediocre to any of the national players. Mm -hmm. So price-wise, if we get the same price as them, sure. I, you can do the math. Sure. If we get the same price as them, their store costs 10 million, our store costs uh, one and a half million. Sure. It means they have a 100,000 or more repayment yes. to our 15,000 rent repayment. Sure. So we can give you better discount than them. Jeez. Cause, cause I wanted to say a lot of these puzzle shops they work in groups, uh, and you mentioned at some point that you're also buying group, and I guess this speaks to the volume. Yes, a thousand stores means you're all over South Africa. That's a lot of stores. Yeah, we're all over South Africa, except uh, the other South Africa, which is the Western. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, man. Sure. <laughs> And the resident of the Western Cape, by the way. Also. The Western Cape is tough. <laughs> oh, it's far. It doesn't have the spatial uh, arrangements sure. that allow for our logistics at the moment. We will get there. Okay. We are required to get there because we want to provide services to all Sasa beneficiaries. To all Sasa beneficiaries? People yes. who earn grants? Yes. Okay. So they are there in the Western Cape. It's okay. just a little bit expensive to service the area at the moment. Sure. So we are doing phase one, uh, Gauteng, Limpopo, Northwest, Mpumalanga, and KZN. Okay. Phase two, we are doing the Eastern Cape, Free State, and uh, Northern Cape. Okay. And then at some point, maybe phase three will be the Western Cape. Phase three is going to be the Western Cape. Security. We have, you know, uh, in my acquisitions, uh, when we acquired Avgri mm. we had some security legs. Mm. 
So I appointed two companies, uh, black companies, yes, to assist us with the security. One was one was visible security, one was covert security, where they worked in the plants and saw the loopholes and everything that was happening there. That that means you planted people. Yes. Almost undercover. Yeah, we had a lot of shell gate. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was one of the reasons the company was making a loss. Sure. So the first thing I did was put the two security companies. Sure. In. So we had deployed those two security companies with a personnel of about, in the first stage of about uh, 2,000 people, mm -hmm. uh, with about 500 vehicles. Jeez. Uh, this is every, a store, every store will have a patrol of not less than 40 minutes per store. We'll have an mm -hmm. alarm system, we'll have uh, CCTV cameras, we'll also have uh, smart uh, cameras. Jeez. Yeah. That sounds great. All supplied by black companies, by the way. Yes, I forgot to ask this. You mentioned that your store costs a million. Compared to the 10 million? One and a half, yes. One and a half million compared to Inclusive the 10 million. of the 300, yeah. How, how does a store that cost you a, a one and a half million, how do I end up buying it for 300,000? You're not buying the store. Okay. You are, you, are, you, are, you are investing in your own store. Okay. The other 1.2 is the asset, is the building. The store itself, which and belongs to you. And the equipment. Okay, yes. that belongs to you. Yes. Or, which means that any time if, if we disagree, I vacate the store and another franchisee comes in. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. No, okay, no, then that makes sense. Um, I wanted to ask supply, security. Uh, there was a question I wanted to ask which I've lost now. Uh, you mentioned you're the Woolies. Woolies, Woolies when, it, when it came about, wasn't a function of asking black people what they want. No. And it was not even intended for them. But now all of a sudden there's, there's Woolworths food in, in townships. Do you think to you has something similar to that where if you maybe ask a black person what do you want from a spaza shop, they'll tell you cheaper pricing, etc. And you're coming from the we're not going to ask you exactly what you need. We know what spaza shops were before. We know what they should be now. We want to give it to you and you will buy in. Do you believe yes. you're, you're coming from that perspective, almost like, like Apple did? Yes, uh, most definitely. And we're also bringing indigenous pro uh, products that will is one of its uh, successes is that more than the traditionals who have been there for a long time, mm. if I go to Woolies, I eat my hearts or that I found on the mountain in Limpopo. Jeez. So they are innovative in terms of herbs, uh, indigenous foods, mm. uh, fruits, and all of those things, and that's the way to do business. Sure. So if they're doing it well, big ups to them. Sure. Yeah. No, fair enough. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I've got any more questions. I know I had a burning question, but it's it, it slipped my mind. How do people contact you? You mentioned you've got a website. Yeah, we've got a website which is www.toyoufoods.co.za mm. uh, yes. Okay. It works currently on the mobile. It will be open fully uh, quite soon on, sure. the, on, the, on, the, on the full website. Um, we, I, I need to bring 300,000 cash. We Stores have, are in. We have a sales team uh, mm. that we, I think we will post also on the website. Sure. Uh, yeah, you bring 300,000 and we are go. Okay. <laughs> so for we're anyone... Very, we're very simple. We don't have uh, too many processes. Sure. Uh, I wanted to ask about delivery, I think. You mentioned that people... We follow... deliver on a daily basis to each and every store. We have a company that I also empower at daybreak. Sure. Uh, black company, young boys from Social Groove. Yes. Uh, and Mami Lodi and Atridgeville. Yes. They used to work for Afgri. They came to me. They said, you know, we've got this logistics. And they were doing procurement for the company and all that. Sure. And I said, what can you do? They said, we can give you logistics. I said, okay, let's see. Sure. Today they're supplying your rainbow foods and 
the likes wow. uh, with logistics. Huh. So they're going to be our main logistics supplier. It's a company called Muhari Logistics. Okay. I remember the burning question I had in my mind. You mentioned Sasa grounds. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think we were supposed to stop as soon as you mentioned that. <laughs> What's the link? What, what do you mean you're going to be supplying uh, Sasa beneficiaries? Every retailer is supplying them. Mm. So currently, the Sasa card buys at every retail store. Okay. Except and Spaza shops. Ex if Spaza shops have the uh, POS system, they buy. Sure. Okay. So it's a huge market that we're looking at, and it's an open market. Sure. But the minister has been speaking about introducing uh, vouchers for food parcels. Instead of cash? Instead of cash. Okay. So now those vouchers are currently... No, no, no. Instead of delivering food parcels to okay. the household. Okay. Now those vouchers are currently being delivered by suppliers into every household mm -hmm. by trucks. Sure. Now, that's a competitive thing that we would like to bid for mm. and we think that our store is very mm. well equipped to give those food parcels and deliver them house to house sure. yes training for franchises i mean if you're mentioning bakery butchery cafe and potentially liquor there's there's a training process because after i give you the three hundred thousand, we have, we, have, we have training internally we have got chefs that mm. work for to you food that uh, do the training We've got uh, business trainers, uh, third-party trainers. So when you subscribe, there's a set program of training that you go through. Mm. Uh, where you come in, you attend the training, sure. you do the practicals, and uh, when you are done and ready, the basic running of the business and everything, sure. You go home, you get your store, you start working. Good to go. Yes. No, thank you very much, uh, Kudufel. I think we'll probably do another follow-up to this, uh, especially tracking the, the progress that you guys have made. Um, I was very skeptical, as you know, about Two You Foods, especially looking at your competition. And I think one of the discussions we had was the fact that you're not competing the way that we think of competing. Let's be cheaper, let's be smaller. You're saying... There was puzzle shops back then and they never evolved. And today we are that evolution. And we meet all the health standards, which a lot of puzzle shops obviously don't meet. We don't support illegal uh, immigrants, which are a big problem in this country. And it, it sounds like your systems are quite uh, modern and innovative. And I think for any franchisee that's hungry, it sounds like a plug and play. And at 300000 to have a, a convenient store at a price that's much cheaper than owning like a small fish and chip franchise. I think it's, it's probably one of the best offerings in the market currently. So I think from my side, I, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, I'm going to try and raise my own 300 score to, uh, <laughs> to get a franchise. And I think, yeah, let's, let's, let's carry on pushing and fighting because um, business is war. And uh, I think we must, we must fight to win. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can I walk on, please? Sure.